So, in this workshop, I am not going to preach any ethics at you. And the reason is this. I actually don't have to. And here's why. I have an undergraduate degree in philosophy. And I remember way back when, when I took my class on ethics, I came out and I actually didn't know what was ethical after, if you can believe that. So, uh, it came down to two major camps that almost everybody falls into whenever they describe ethics in a situation. One is the Kantian perspective where you argue, well, this was ethical because it was the right thing to do. In and of itself, there is something ethical about the decision, and these are always the right decisions to make. Versus the utilitarian approach, which says, well, you do a situation that creates the greatest good for the most people. So it has the most positive outcome for people overall, and that's the ethical way to go. So I always had a problem with ethics because um, everyone calls it differently. Like one person says, oh, that's ethical. It's like, why is that ethical? Well, because of this. And then what about that? Well, they give you a different explanation. And you're like, well, doesn't it contradict? No, because that's ethical. And you're like, well, they actually don't have rules. There are no rules. Psychology helps us understand what ethical systems are. And there's a bigger research that looks at the fusion between disgust emotions and ethical systems. Um, Disgust is an emotion that protects us from threats. So uh, people have discussed reactions to food that's gone off, to potentially like things that look like infectious disease, dirt, um, certain like creatures, critters will cause a disgust reaction. Like, and you can tell when someone's like feeling disgust, like they'll cringe and they go, Ugh, and they make that disgust face. Now, there's another point in time where we will notice people do the exact same thing. And that's when they have had a moral violation. So when a friend has betrayed them, when somebody you know has talked wrong about you, when you're doing business with someone and they really played a sneaky move. They did a sleight of hand, got you to sign up for a contract and didn't explain the fine print, uh, tricked you into doing something. Somebody knew that if they told you the full picture, you wouldn't have gone along but yet they decided to tell you a half-truth. They decided to not tell you the full picture, and now you're at a disadvantage, and they basically shafted you. And when that happens, we all feel this moral outrage. It's a violation. And when people talk about that, they use the exact same language that they do when they talk about disgusting things. They say, that person makes me sick. This was disgusting. And look at their face. Listen to their words. They're going to cringe and they will actually use, they will literally say disgust. Listen to it. You will hear it. And down the middle of this model, we have the ethical line. And so, so we, I define the ethical line not as something I can preach to. It's not rules. I can't tell you case by case what to look for. But I can tell you this. Look for an emotional line. So anytime people feel violated, they feel that disgust, an ethical line has been crossed. And if you yourself in anything you design makes you feel this way, there's, there's a good chance you're putting things out that are going to make your end users feel that way. So the ethical line is one, it's fuzzy. We can't describe it because it's one that exists within emotional systems, but it's felt. The legal line is, you would think a bit more straightforward. So, you know, you, you violate a law, you're compliant with the law. Well, bureaucrats, you know, deal with laws at a technical level. It's black and white and they'll cite this, this and that. But the reality is we have courts because courts have to deal with the chaos of legal systems. Legal systems have overlapping and contradictory concepts. And it's the job of a judge to actually figure out what's a, what's the situation and how does it fit with the law and what categories apply and how do you conceptualize it and what is the right law. And so legal systems are, they're total chaos. They're really messy systems. And so we have two fuzzy lines here. So this fuzzy ethical line, which we can define when people feel moral disgust, and a legal line where a uh, law has been crossed. And I don't have a, a law background, so, uh, and anyone, uh, and uh, for you, in whatever country you're in, you're going to have different laws that operate in digital environments. So, Out of this, we have four quadrants. Uh, I'm going to talk through each of them. So in the upper right, we have a persuasive quadrant. And up here, we have an example of a vast. A vast is trying to nudge people. They're straightforward in what, what they're doing. They're telling you, buy our product. They're giving a deal. I label this as talking the truth. So they're just telling you, this is our deal. Now, 
They, they use some techniques when people find out, they might feel it was a little deceptive, but it's fairly uh, ab above the line. Now, next we have deceptive. So these are things that are legal, but people consider them unethical. And can't think of anyone better than Ashley Madison for being technically legal, but extremely un unethical in what their business was about and facilitating infidelity. Um, they also absolutely cross legal lines. So they're the proud winner of not just being deceptive, but also committing fraud outright against their um, constituents, their like customers. But anytime uh, we have a situation where, where it's technically legal but unethical, that's where we talk about dark patterns and deception patterns in persuasive psych. We're not going to be doing any of that, but we will be talking about it because uh, quite often people will uh, misinterpret what you're doing and you never want people to feel that they've been duped into something. And that's where we talk about a half-truth. So half-truth is someone actually, they knew the full picture and they were happy for you to stay in the dark. Um, next we have ethical and illegal lines. So I can't think of anything better also than Sci-Hub. So Sci-Hub is a website that gives access to a large number of academic publications. I think it's uh, widely known in the academic community, but it's technically illegal because, uh, you know, people have to get their scientific journals from the companies that sell these services or through universities that have subscriptions. So it's widely used, um, but it's illegal. And so there we talk about the blue lie. And the blue lie is where people will rationalize something that's not true because it serves their community and their self-interest a little bit. And finally, we have a quadrant where things are illegal and unethical. And here we have this wonderful scam here. This was a, a popular uh, ransomware scam that would get hold of people's files and say, send us your Bitcoin or we're ditching your files. So this was extortion. This is absolutely illegal and absolutely Unethical, and that's where we're talking about outright lies and deception and other like awful techniques. Now, in this workshop, uh, ethics are at the core of everything we do because when we are per persuasive, it's not because we have special super manipulation powers and people do what we say. It's because people trust us, and they trust us because we're honest people. They trust our brand because we're an honest, ethical company, and they trust our technology because it's run by competent, honest people who are acting in their interest. And so everything we do rests on an ethical core. And so I cannot teach any principle more important than building everything out from this core. Uh, we're going to go... Um, into this throughout the, the workshop and I don't have to say anything more on ethics because there's really not much without it. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, just add them below. If you enjoyed the video, I'm totally grateful for a thumbs up so that I know if I've hit the mark or not. And if you'd like to stay in touch, just click on the link to subscribe below. Speak later, ciao.